This video will be all about weird sequels that are done for the sake of experimentation and for avoiding slight rehashes of the exact same game. I already mentioned Pac-Man being the first franchise that did that, and now it's time to mention Super Mario Bros. The original was a smash hit and everyone was making clones of it, but when the time came for a sequel, the result was the exact same game with a much higher difficulty. The American branch of Nintendo didn't like it and refused to release it there, so they requested a different game. Game. In their infinite wisdom and in a hurry to publish something before Super Mario Bros. 3 comes out, the people of Nintendo took an unknown platformer called Doki Doki Panic and reskinned it so it will seem like it's a Mario game. The gameplay had no relation to the first, but it wasn't a rehash either, so the West gave its approval despite not actually being a Mario game. And funny enough, although later games returned to the gameplay of the first, some enemies and mechanics from Doki Doki Panic remained in the franchise and are used ever since. So basically it became canon, although it wasn't meant to be. It's a rare case when you try random stuff in a hurry and something works out in the end. Before I move on to the next example, I need to mention a shift in aesthetics during the mid-80s. If you remember the shmups video, I called all of them aerial because there were limitations in technology which led to all of them taking place in the air. This began to change in 1985 with Commando, the first earthbound shmup, partly because technology could now allow interaction with obstacles as well as having a plot and partly because action movies and war dramas were becoming a thing. From here on, video games slowly focus more and more on the character side of the plot instead of the spaceship or the airplane. It's when characterization begins being very important, when dialogue and character designs are given far more emphasis, and why aerial shmups begin to go out of fashion in favor of action adventures in the likes of Zelda and Castlevania. Speaking of which, the second Zelda game switched from a top-down view to a platformer. It wasn't the best of ideas, since that way the gameplay had many limitations regarding freedom of movement. The logic they were going for was to make it more like an RPG, by making the sprites bigger, adding riddles, extended dialogues, and in general promoting exploration and backtracking. The feedback they got was mostly negative, people loved the top-down view and not the very limiting platformer style, which is why the franchise returned in the 90s to its top-down view. It also didn't lose the RPG elements, it only backed down from making it a full-fledged role-playing game. Something less extreme happened to the second Castlevania game. It also had more RPG elements compared to the first, and it didn't change the gameplay drastically, since it already was a platformer. The problem was more about the the very cryptic and often hard riddles, coupled with a not good English translation. The feedback was again negative, later games returned to a more traditional platformer, until one of them mastered the art of exploration and dialogues in the 90s, and we got the birth of Metroidvania games. A franchise that didn't have to go back to its roots after a negatively received second game or even wait until the 90s for refining the mechanics was the Wonder Boy series. The first one was a very successful platformer with a simple yet captivating gameplay, the second one went for a fantasy action adventure where you had to be constantly upgrading your equipment and to increase your life points and arsenal of secondary weapons. Lots of secrets were giving you the best available stats, and finding them was promoting exploration. It was very complex for an arcade game of its time, people loved it and wanted more of the same. Which is why the third game in the series evolved the combat mechanics to not only changing your equipment but also the shape of your body, which in turn changed drastically the way you move and fight with each form. Then we got the Bubble Bubble franchise. We all know the original platformer about two dragons that trap their enemies with bubbles, and the spin-off Puzzle Bubble where you throw bubbles for popping them when they are of the same color. The direct sequel of the original game is Rainbow Islands, a platformer with a completely different gameplay and stages that are not static since they have vertical scrolling. Do you know why they made it so different? Because plot-wise, at the end of the first game, the characters who were cursed to be dragons turned back to humans and thus in the sequel they are now humans who use their actual powers, which is rainbows. But wait, there is more! The third game in the series is Parasol Stars, which again has completely different gameplay, because at the end of the second game the characters got magic umbrellas. As you can see, the creators were not afraid to experiment, and the result is a completely different experience each time, instead of getting constant rehashes of the exact same thing. Thank goodness this is not happening anymore! 